How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling with myself and Brian Alvarez. Uh, we may or may not have Jim Neidhart up in a, in a half an hour. I guess we'll find out at that time. So uh, if not, but we certainly have a ton of emails, and uh, we can always, of course, we'll be taking your phone calls as well at one eight seven seven three nine two thirty two ninety nine, talking about pro wrestling. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Did you get done early? I did not. Got done about did I? <laughs> you know, I found out one important thing. It's I can do work on the newsletter any time during the day, but as far as the actual writing and editing part of it, I cannot do it after before like nine o'clock at night. I just can't. I can't concentrate because the sun's out and you know birds are chirping or whatever. But I mean, after nine o'clock, I can go to like two in the morning just writing and everything. But before that, I'm just useless. I I had that. Um, I'm trying to figure out why it took me so long. Why would it, I mean I was like totally done except for um, you know basically the SmackDown. That's what SmackDown. I was at too. And and I got the SmackDown. I got all the SmackDown stuff real early, so that was like no problem. And what was I? I don't even know what I was doing la- last night. Lucha. I kept rearrang- you know what? I kept just going over the Johnny Valentine story because it was one of those. I mean, it was like one of those things I where I was going to say really rearranging like the furniture. No, I was just don't know. Remember the furniture that you had that was made out of wrestling tapes? <laughs> you know, you know what? One thing that I did last night actually that 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 um was there were a couple of roller derby skaters that died. In fact, some someone sent it to me. It's actually in the Observer a little bit. So I went through to look some of their stuff up, and it started scaring me because every time I look at like I've got this guy as many of you know um um was in a class with my sister-in-law. And as a present, you know, found out, you know, was a, subscriber, a long-time subscriber, like for 10 or 15 years, and just said, you know, um, you know, he gave me this thing as like it was like a, it was over Christmas, and it was like every issue of Roller Derby Illustrated. Um, every, so I got it in this closet, and I go, you know, I'm going to look up a little bit on some of these guys, and every time I do that and start looking up 1972 Roller Derby, it's like it's like 1998, 1999 Pro Wrestling. These two warring companies, businesses through the roof. And then two years later, you know, like uh, one year later, one of them was gone, which is where we're at now. Uh-oh. And then like another year and a half later, the other one was gone, which is like what I'm scared to death of is going to happen now. Although there, there yeah, are no you signs. Read the SmackDown of... spoilers, and you felt even worse. <laughs> well, no, actually, um, actually, I woke up and I saw the heat rating. Oh my God. That's anyway, right. um, anyway, you know, we'll, we'll talk about SmackDown in just a second, real quick. Um, but uh, the raw number did a 4.98 which is slightly down from the week before. And, um, you know, that's, that's that's basically the same number they were doing, un- you know, opposed a month ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, main event was a 5.62, which was the Undertaker-Austin 47-second match or 57-second match. Uh, China Trish Stratus did well, although that was the same. They, they did a lot of stuff with Undertaker and, uh, and Triple H and Austin and Kane and everything in that same quarter. And the McMahon family interview did all right, but much lower than the McMahon family interview has been doing. Heat did a 1.08, and I, I could be wrong about this, but I do not recall Heat ever doing any number, even remotely that low. I mean, I remember, you know, I think I, I think I remember like a 1.4, you know, some months of, some months ago, but not a 1.08. I mean, and I, I have, and it's like. You know, it's not like they're going. They were going against the Super Bowl, which actually they may have done a 1.08 against the Super Bowl. But I mean, it's like, does anyone have an explanation? And please don't tell me, because those of you on the West Coast wouldn't watch because it went head to head with the pay per view, which is actually true, except for the fact that there have been that situation has been every fourth week on Heat since the beginning of Heat. So you've always had. There's always been that excuse. And I remember when when Heat used to drop from a 2.8 to a 2.6. You know, on the week of the pay-per-view, which actually made sense because you would drop, you you, you are going to lose about a tenth of a tenth to two tenths of a point um, because of, of the losing the West Coast. But that's not an explanation for a 1.1 rating. Uh, Livewire didn't 09. Super I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but you know, I had the whole deal about it. I'm going to watch Heat from now on because there's no WCW and it's something fun to do on a Sunday night. It's only an hour. But after last week's show, I decided why watch it? There's no point to it, and I didn't watch it this week. Well, it's your Not fault. Not that my then. house was responsible for a full point, but well, no, he's been doing like one, one in the one six, one seven range. Um, mm-hmm. I, think, I think he did a one seven the week before. So, anyway, that's what's going on there. Um, we'll talk a bit about uh, SmackDown from last night, uh, real quick. Uh, let's see, Randy Orton actually gets a TV match on Heat. So, those of you who've never seen him, he does a job for Billy Gunn, but he, they do give him mic time. Um, he does a, he has a promo on Billy Gunn, and then Billy Gunn beats him. 
Um, then they also do, let's see, wow. uh, uh, Taka beat, Taka Michinoku beat Crash Holly when, uh, Funaki helped out. Steve Blackman beat Perry Saturn. Crash still drunk? And, uh, no, he was sober. And, okay. boy, that was bad too. Uh, and then the APA beat Albert and Just Incredible. Okay, so Raw starts. And uh, Undertaker comes out, and he now has a chain. And um, he's really upset because Steve Austin destroyed his bike after Raw went off the air. They show a clip of that. And Undertaker said that he's going to get revenge. They announced that Kane has suffered a broken arm, which is going to heal really quick. Because I know I don't know if he's going to be wrestling Sunday uh, in England. I don't know one way or the other. But um, the, the plan is for him to be wrestling in, on the pay-per-view against uh, Triple H, which is, what is it, two and a half weeks away? So he's gonna, Is it that early? Yeah, they're doing three weeks. So it's going to be tough. Plus, they already the gave the main event away. isn't it? The 20th. Or 20th, 20th, yeah. Yeah, paper is the 20th. Plus, it's Austin Undertaker, which we just saw on on Raw, and they didn't give us a good match. That doesn't... You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if I... I don't know. And then they How also about announced... Benoit Angle in a ladder match? Has that been announced? Or no, but I was just thinking ideas? about it. You know, what do you do with these medals? Maybe just hang them above the ring, but, you know... Oh, we just what are Benoit we... Angle going to do in a ladder match? We That's just did totally... We just did a ladder match with Benoit and Jericho, which was which was a hell of a match. In fact, one yeah. of the best matches of the whole year. But um, that's coming back with it pretty quick. Plus, you know, they did tables, ladders, and chairs. They did ladders at WrestleMania too. I mean, yep. what are we going to do? Like, have, you know, it's like it's going to be like uh, the Russo days where you got to have a cage every week. We're gonna we can't do that's a match right. without a ladder. That's right. Um, anyway, Undertaker mentions in his interview um, that he uh, set fire and. Uh, and, and his brother's face ended up being burned. So imagine what he would do to someone he doesn't like, which is interesting because he didn't mention that he also <laughs> killed his parents in that same fire. <laughs> That's right. right. Oh, my God. By, by the way... They really dug themselves into a hole with that angle. Yeah. So anyway, um, Vince McMahon ends up... The big thing is there's the big surprise. He's got a big surprise for Undertaker. There's a new guy coming in, big mystery guy, and to spoil everyone's fun... Um, you know, it, it ends up being Rikishi of all people, which I guess, what the hell. Triple H beat Jeff Hardy with a pedigree. <laughs> <laughs> He's all about helping those young guys, you know? He really yeah, is. Yeah, you know what's so good about that one is like, uh, I can just imagine like, you know, at the, at, at, at like the thing, it's like, you know, um, you know, I think that some people might have thought that that win I had over Jeff Hardy was a fluke. So I think we better do it again. So even though Undertaker comes, Austin's at ringside, Undertaker comes out there and starts pounding on Austin. And there's all this distraction. Um, he beats him with a pedigree anyway. Uh, so then they go back, and it's Undertaker and Austin are brawling back there. Actually, uh, Austin jumps Undertaker in uh, backstage, but Undertaker makes a comeback and throws Austin through a plate glass window. Which am I? Am I correct that we just saw the plate glass window at WrestleMania with Raven? I believe we did. Yes. I mean, I remember. Ra I mean, I remember Raven going through it. There's so many shows. I'm. I'm. I was, yeah, the big show in Kane. So it was the WrestleMania match. So. Um, Anyway, Austin, even though Raven was fine and probably worked, you know, four more minutes of the match and then wrestled the next night, uh, Steve Austin was blinded because the glass got in his eye and he had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, but anyway, before we get to the hospital, uh, let's see, Raven beat X-Pac and then the whole X-Factor group jumped him and beat him up, which probably means we had to listen to the music twice. Uh, then they go in there, they take Austin on a stretcher, they put him in an ambulance, and who is driving the ambulance but The Undertaker? I need I to like say Steve Austin was driving the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> he attacked himself. Yeah. So anyway, um, Triple H is in the ambulance. Undertaker's beating up Triple H. He's beating up Austin again. And um, and then the security, I guess, uh, gets rid of him. So anyway, uh, let's see. Um, Deborah comes in. And is Undertaker is in the back seat of the ambulance or is he driving? He's driving, but he goes through. You know, now, how and, the hell and, does that work? I don't know. We'll watch it on SmackDown tomorrow night. So Vince and Stephanie tell Deborah what happened to her husband, and boy, is she mad. She goes to Undertaker's dressing room, and Undertaker explains that this is like men's business or something Undertaker like that. Undertaker tells her to get in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Quit spilling coffee on me. And uh, right. So she slaps, uh, she slaps Undertaker in the face, and that's that. Then Hardcore Holly pins Kurt Angle. Uh, with a schoolboy, because Chris Benoit's on the apron with the two medals. <laughs> hey, I'm just reading it, you know. Um, then uh, Vincent Undertaker uh, do an interview. Or Vince does an interview. Undertaker comes out. Undertaker decks Vince McMahon. They're, hey, they're trying to... Listen, they got three weeks to get this guy over for the main event, and I will give them credit. They are really working hard 
to get Undertaker over as a baby face to where, you know, people want to buy this pay-per-view. And uh, they didn't even get the buy rate the last one. And again, I don't know. Maybe the last one did better than... The heat, the heat number doesn't bode well for that pay-per-view, but that's not always a direct correlation either. Anyway, um, he, st he uh, stalks Stephanie, but just tells her that... Uh, uh, tell Daddy when he wakes up that the Undertaker has taken back his yard, whatever that means. Uh, then they are in the hospital. Jonathan Coachman's in the hospital. By the way, wasn't that a great line about, you know, go back? What, what, what did Regal say about, to him at the pay-per-view about go back to covering, was it frog races or something? I, <laughs> I can't remember said. what he said. Something in Kansas City. I thought that was pretty humorous. But anyway, uh, he's at the hospital, and Triple H comes out and explains that uh, his eyes... Have some is, pride. Yeah. <laughs> that there's pus coming out and blood everywhere, and that he may never see again. He may be blinded. And like... Like, uh, people are going like, you know, does, is Russo writing this stuff again? This here, here you go. Midway through the show, the guy's blinded. By the end of the show, he's already doing a run-in. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not like he's out of action for three weeks or anything. Um, so anyway, um, Edge Christian Surprise Ryan... Surprisingly, Hunter doing that deal there. He had Kane with yeah. a broken arm. He's going to be out till the pay-per-view. This blind guy is back at the end of the show. Yeah. Matt Hardy and Chris Jericho beat Edge, Christian, and Rhino when Eddie Guerrero got on the apron, and Eddie Guerrero and Edge got into it, and Matt Hardy gave Edge the twist of fate. So, uh, does that mean We're the Rhino's those two up? What, Edge and Christian? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what it looked like on Monday. God, that's yeah. so sad. That's so sad. Why, why wouldn't you have a successful tag? Because, the you know, you know they, they did it with the New Age Outlaws, and then both of those guys were never the same. Yeah. Um, and it was so clear just looking at the crowd reaction with, in fact, the, the angle they did with uh, Kurt Angle when he comes in and asks for, where his medals are, and Christian just goes, I don't know, and Edge goes, I don't even care. And everyone popped big, so it's like, okay, Edge is going to be the baby face. Poor Christian's just going to be floundering as a small heel in the WWF, which is, you know, it's a recipe for failure right there. Sad. You know what's, what's too bad? You know, he, you know, I told you, like, he's not that small. Well, I mean, it's just compared to the other guys. Yeah, no, I know, no, I know. I mean, what's funny was was meeting, you know, he was a lot bigger than I expected meeting him. So He's like six uh, feet and, what is he, I, six I'd say, feet? I'd, and... I'd, say every, I'd say every bit of six one. Mm -hmm. he's, more, he's more than six feet. He was, uh, how tall, he, he's probably a, an inch and a half taller than Dreamer. What's, what's Dreamer legit? Dreamer's not six two. No, I didn't mean Dreamer. I meant... Dreamer is not <laughs> six two. No, Dreamer's about six feet. Okay, so I'd say I'd say Christian's probably six one, maybe six one and a half. Um, hmm. Edge is probably six three and a half, maybe. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds about okay. right. No, I, I was that. I was there. So well, I, I'm was, six feet tall, and they and Tommy and I kind of sized up, you know, pretty close. Oh, and, oh so you're gonna fight him? No, <laughs> <laughs> never, never. But uh, but no, Edge was. You can't fight him because he was too good of a guest. No. <laughs> Besides, he'd kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. But Edge and Christian were both a slight. I mean, were both slightly taller than me. So I would have to say, you know, six, six. Let's see. Uh, well, Edge is several inches taller than Christian. Yeah. So I'd say Edge is about six four. Yeah. Close. Okay. Six three and a half. I'm guessing. Yeah. Six four maybe. Christian six one and a half maybe. Okay. There, there we go. There we've got it. Okay. Now someone's gonna, you know what they're gonna do? Someone's gonna send like some WF trading card that says like Christian six four or something. <laughs> and <it's> eight feet. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, where were we? Okay, uh, Jerry Lynn beat Grandmaster Sex A using the ropes for leverage to retain the light heavyweight title. So Jerry Lynn is is like they're they're doing this heel thing, and I think it's gonna get him over as a baby face the way they're doing it. I don't know, okay. maybe I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, then Stone Cold is back in the building. Uh, in the locker room with his eye bandaged, saying that uh, it, he mentions that Triple H has been arrested for no other than, I guess, for causing hell in the hospital. So Triple H isn't back. Austin is back. I guess that's to explain why Triple H and Austin are both not attacking Undertaker in the show. So Undertaker's wrestling Rikishi. Austin comes out, um, comes out with a chair, tries to do a run in. Somehow he doesn't work. Undertaker gets the chair, hits Rikishi. Austin runs away. And uh, that's basically the show with no finish. So he couldn't even pin Rikishi. Well, that's his first match back. I guess they didn't want to do it. Yeah, yeah I know. This is the guy that's supposed to be uh, getting a world title shot. In three weeks. Yes. He, well, you're right. Couldn't even pin Rikishi. No reason not to. I mean, like, you're right. I mean, like, no reason not to. Let's check out the poll here uh, for Raw. 6% excellent. 9% good. 
29% average, 33% bad, 23% oh. awful, which is probably wow. about the worst. I, I thought that that, even though the, the, the first part, I'd say the first, like, mm, half hour, 45 minutes of Raw were, were, was, was pretty decent. In fact, the first part of Raw was, was pretty good. That might have been the weakest Raw show of the year. Yeah, it went way downhill. Because I was thinking if there had been a Nitro head-to-head, -head, you know how like, whenever we do the poll with Raw and Nitro and, and almost every week Raw would win, this would have been the week where Nitro would have beaten Raw the, on mm -hmm. Monday, unless it was a really one of those bad, really bad Nitros. Uh, this is our question for today. Uh, what are your thoughts about a relaunched WCW? A, it'll be a big success and be kept separate from WWF. Number B is it will have some success. They'll blend in in six months to a year. C, it will have little impact, and they'll quickly do the angle. That means they'll they'll try it um, and kind of give up on it. Yeah, kind of give up on it. D is it will have no impact. They'll do the angle, but the angle won't work either. Um, and then E is it will have no impact, and they won't even try the angle. So that's the screw. You were stretching there. for five there, weren't you? What? Were you no, stretching not for really. five. Not at all. Not at all. The one that they won't try the angle? It's, it's possible. I've, it's, people have talked about it, that they just try this thing, and it fails so bad they don't even, you know, I mean, I guess they could always do the promotion versus promotion angle in the mid card, which would basically be they are doing the angle, but it really doesn't count. Because if it's not a main mm -hmm. event angle, then, then, you know, what's the point? Okay. Not that what's the point, but if it's not a main event angle, then that's going to be a very, dis it's going to be very disappointing. Any other news before we start hitting emails? I think that's it. Okay. This is from Jay Arbitman, who says, No one in the 60s and 70s talked about killing anybody? I think not. Ox Baker and his heart punch. Well, you're right. I was talking about when I was growing up, uh, you know, Ox Baker never wrestled San Francisco, although he did wrestle Los Angeles. And Ox Baker did in Los Angeles talk about killing people. Ox Baker, the, the thing with Ox Baker was, um, Ox Baker was in the ring in 72, and I think 71. It was really weird. He was in a tag match. And uh, Torres, Alberto Torres in Omaha, suffered a heart attack and, and died. Um, all, uh, um, and then he wrestled uh, Ray Gunkel, who was actually the co-owner of the Georgia Territory, which actually this actually actually led to a major promotional war, um, very famous situation in, in Georgia. But Ray Gunkel died in a ma you know in, in the locker room, he suffered a heart attack about 15, 20 minutes after a match with Ox Baker. So in you know. Wrestling terminology, Ox Baker killed seven men. I mean, I remember when he came to Los Angeles, Ox Baker, the man who's killed sub seven men. And he would talk about killing people, so you're right. Um, and I thought, I remember when Ox Baker came to L.A. and talked about killing people, I thought, you know, this is way too far. You know, it's like they crossed the line, because San Francisco, man, that, you know, talk about broken legs, but never broken necks. And, uh, you know what I mean? That was like the limit was broken legs, which they always talked about. Mm -hmm. It's John who goes, do you think that test has been kept down by Triple H in the same manner Jericho has. Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. You know, that, that, that Monday was pretty uh, confusing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, if anyone is close to Triple H's look, it's Test. You know, it's funny thing is, 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 is like, Test isn't even in Triple H's level. Mm -hmm. but, but there's no reason to keep him not in his level. I, I don't know, you know, like, Test had a hell of a match on SmackDown several weeks, many weeks back now with Kurt Angle. And I know that people wanted to elevate him from there, and it's like they sort of did on the pay-per-view, and then they like just destroyed it the very next night. It was so, it was so. I swear, it's so WCW-like. Uh, when I was writing the Observer last night, I kept thinking, you know, this is the stuff that I used to write about WCW, where they would do something with a babyface, give him a little bit of push, and then like hit him over the head with a hammer to kill, kill him. him. You know, I mean, I was thinking like Test might as well like be the tall guy in the Filthy Animals. Yeah. Um, he goes, I think Tess could be great in the ring and on the stick if they just let him get in the mix. Um, hey, we'll never know unless you get the chance. Um, he's certainly not bad. Uh, it's from Brian, who says, I value you and your opinion and the guys from the law's opinion, but I think Rob Van Dam could do a lot for the ratings for WCW. Um, Rob Van Dam won't make a difference in the ratings one way or the other, although I would I would like him in WCW. I think it's, he could be a star there, but... He, you know, I mean, I mean, Rob Van Dam didn't make a difference in the ratings in ECW. Um... There's only a few guys who, in and of themselves, really make a difference in ratings. Um, um, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I can't even say Austin. I mean, at, at one point, obviously, Austin did. At one point, Sable did. I think The Rock does. Um, Vince McMahon does. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, Flair, at you know, certainly at times did, absolutely, and and Bill Goldberg at times did. But 
I think it ends there. I, maybe there might be one guy I'm miss, missing, but uh, yeah. it's more the quality of the whole show overall rather than, you know, one guy being there or not being there. Just the product in general. Yeah. Okay. Uh, put in the ring with the right people, and he can get huge pops from the crowd and make people tune in. Um, so can Sid. Nah, get he huge pops from the crowd? Doesn't mean he, he won't get huge pops in. from the crowd. He won't make people tune in. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would suggest, you know, that they put him there, but, um, you know, it's like not having him or having him. You know, it's, it's the overall product that's either going to, you know, make that thing or not make that thing. And, and Van Dam himself isn't isn't strong enough to make to be the difference maker. Although, you know, I mean, he has potential to be a big star. Can we go through a couple of emails before we start taking phone calls after the break? This is a semantic question that's a little bit meaningless. But anyway, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> uh, do you not think a more accurate... Okay, this, do you think the term independent is meaningless? Do you not think a more accurate distinction will be regional, national, and international? The term independent doesn't mean anything. What makes a company such as XPW or UPW any more independent than WWF? With the distinction of regional, national, and international, it would remove the conjecture over whether or not ECW was an independent in the 90s. Who the hell cares? <laughs> or whether XPW is an independent now? Okay, obviously XPW is an independent, but there are those who will argue otherwise. Why does it matter? I know. They get funding from the government? <laughs> However, if they were called a regional, nobody would, able, would be able to debate this label. How about a, a singular? They run one building once a month. That doesn't make you a regional. Regional means that you run a region, not like one building. Okay? Uh, this would also give ECW a distinction from WF or WCW because ECW could be a national. Well, why do they call the WWF a federation? I don't know. And why do they call it wrestling? I mean, Vince McMahon, remember that they, they, they always said, like, we're not wrestling? Yeah. And then they said, the, but the reason they don't want to take res, wrestling out is they can't figure up an, uh, another thing for that initial because that brand name. The only reason it's WWF um, is World Wrestling Federation, the term wrestling is in the, the brand, is because it's so established as a brand because they don't want to even be wrestling. So anyway, that's another story. Um, so I don't think so much on that kick anymore. That seemed to be something that uh, Russo was like trying to get into his ear because, uh, you know, when Russo was there, it was totally sports entertainment. You never even heard the word wrestling. Now that Russo's gone, the word wrestling has come back. So I don't think yeah, Vince is so against it anymore. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, and then when Russo went to WCW, they started calling everybody sports entertainers, remember? Yep. That was so stupid. Anyway, um, yeah, there, hey, look, there's, there's The Rock, the world-famous sports entertainer. Anyway, um, <laughs> where were we? Uh, let's see. A promotion like ECW would be classified as national, whereas the big two would have been international. Um, ECW ran Canada, so that makes them international. Uh, I think they only ran once or twice, but still. Um, and they ran in Japan. So that's that's real international. I mean, it was only... Well, anyway. It must be a real uh, world title. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. This is from someone who goes, Dave, this is from Dave, who goes, I vaguely remember seeing a tag team match in Stampede where Chris Benoit and Dynamite Kid were in, in it. I don't remember if they were on the same team or not, but I do have a memory of this. Am I crazy? Yeah, Dynamite Kid was the booker in Stampede in the late 80s, and Chris Benoit was working the territory. And, um, I mean, I remember, the, um, I know that they tag teamed, and I know the Dynamite Kid, like, did a retirement angle, although he didn't, he did not retire, and gave Chris Benoit his boots. And I think later he turned on Chris Benoit, and I think they probably had matches, although, I'm kind of vague on that. Um, I, th I, I remember Dynamite Kid came in and had some hellacious matches, and this was long after Dynamite Kid's prime was over with, with Owen Hart at that period. Um, this is from Lee Mavers, who goes, Do you think part of the reason that Rob Van Dam has not received major attention from the major companies is because of his marijuana use? Well, I will answer that with no. It has nothing to do with it, because <laughs> if it did, uh, there There'd would be, be a lot of guys out of work. There would be a lot of guys out of work right now. That's right. There are certainly others in wrestling who use drugs on a regular basis, but you don't see Although them in magazines. Although he pretty open about it, and he has done those interviews for, like, high times. Yeah, that's true. You don't see them in magazines proclaiming it like Rob did. It certainly wouldn't be good PR for the WF to have a publicly admitted drug user as one of their top wrestlers. Well, uh, that can't be. He won't be doing those interviews anymore once he comes in. No, he won't. <laughs> also, when, I don't think he wants to do them anymore anyway. You know, it was one of those things. I think that, that Paul Heyman liked that because it made it made like the it seemed like it a made cool rebel promotion. Extreme. Yeah, exactly. But uh, he ain't going to be, yeah, I don't think he's going to be doing them anymore. Also, when did the trend of wrestlers getting their heat back after losing a match by immediately attacking their opponents become a popular booking decision in wrestling? Um, I mean, I remember it in the l late 70s and early 80s was when I first started seeing it. In the early 70s, I never saw it, but I think it depended on the territory. Because um, I remember in the AWA, they used to put the heels over and the baby face would clean house afterwards, and this happened like match after match. 
And I used to get so annoyed at it because it was like, you know, if you're gonna put somebody over, put them over. And if you know, you know what I mean. And yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like it makes you, you know, it's kind of like wishy washy, and then guys don't get over. When in the seventies, in the early seventies, I started watching. When a guy got over, I mean, it's like he won and he moved up the card, and the guy who lost, well. But, but, that, but well, it's just so losses. funny because it's like people always talk about, you know, wins and losses don't matter. I don't care about wins or losses, this or that. And then you'll hear, am I going to get my heat back after this? It's like, what do you need your heat back for if this wins and losses matter? Yeah, and you ever notice that, like, the guys that have the most booking power, wins and losses matter to them? He, exactly, yep. <laughs> I know. It's, anyway, it seems like nobody can win a match without quickly getting hit by a chair, getting put through a table, or getting beaten up. You know what it is? It, the, the, it's... it's, it's it's what happens Wins and losses have... do matter. You know that? They really do. Yeah. But you know what else it is? It's, it, as far as like getting heat back and everything, what it is is it's trend of bookers to not rock the boat. And what happens is it's like, okay, you know, um, you know here, Wrestler A, X-Pac. I'll just say X-Pac since you never, they never <laughs> do this. That's a good time. example, actually. <laughs> okay. X-Pac, you know, you're going to have to lose to Raven um, with a DDT. And it's like, well, how do I get my heat back? Well, you can beat him up after the match. That, that way, he's happy, Raven's happy, everyone's happy, as opposed to anyone actually being elevated by yes. by winning and losing and, and have the wins and losses mean something. Um, you know, it's just it's just a way to keep it's it's easy it's it's much easier on morale. It's much easier on bookers to do that. So, uh, let's see. Uh, how approximately how do you, how much do you and Brian spend on pay per view shows every month? I know I spend more than Brian because he's watching it with friends, right? That's right. Five yeah. dollars a show. Okay, I I spend you know whatever it costs. You know, watch every I watch every show. I pay for every show. We got Jim Neidhart on the line right now. Jim, how you doing? Good. Who's this? Dave, Dave? Meltzer. We're Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez. Yes. How are you? Doing really good. Doing really good. I think the last um, time I saw you, Dave, was uh, you were in the lobby in the Kiel Plaza in Japan, maybe ten, fifteen years ago. No, no, no. We've seen each other since we were at uh, World Wrestling Peace Festival. Remember? Oh, okay. Remember when you had just got back from wrestling Dan Severin and uh, you were saying like how he was, you know, I was pretty hard, and, and I go, well, maybe you thought you were Abbott. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had the goatee and everything like Tank Abbott. Yeah, right, just, yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. Jim, what what are you what have you been up to? Uh, what, what have you been up to of late? As of late, well, see, last year I was with the World Wrestling Federation. And uh, they moved me down to Memphis, Tennessee, and as a consultant and as a wrestler and all kinds of odd jobs. And uh, after the Owen Hart thing had uh, uh, came to an end, uh, all the ties with the family and everything just went kaput. So that's about it. Yeah. What? What? You know? What are your thoughts looking back? You know, actually, you know, your your career. From 19, the end of 1997 on, you've been kind of uh, a political, you know, you're you're, a pawn. you're you're yeah, like a political pawn of in this in this family thing, you know, like yeah. with WWF and with WCW, it's kind of like, you know, you went to WCW because of what you know ultimately what happened to Bret, and then and then that and then you were with WWF ultimately because of what happened to Owen in, in, in many ways, don't you think? Well. Um, you know, we had that big run with the Heart Foundation for a while. And then, uh, then the whole group of the Heart Foundation, Baby Boy and Owen and Pillman and myself, you know, they wanted me to fill in the group. So that, that left me a, a reason to come in. So that was going just fine and dandy. Then, let me see what happened to him. Uh, Brett got in a big fight with Vince and punched him out. I am be right there. I went down, you know, down to the ring in the Molson Center, and then looked after Brett a little bit. It looked, looked like it was going to get real nasty. It looked like, looked like the fans were going to riot. And so Brett and Dave, you know, and left, and I didn't have a contract. So I stayed there with the WWF after that Molson fight. And uh, all of a sudden, I, you know, I, I started getting a little push. They were probably going to really use me. And then the WCW um, offered me some good change, real good change, more money than I've ever made in my career. So what do you do? <laughs> you go where the money's at. And then, then went down to WCW. They didn't, they didn't use me and Davey Boy right. They didn't want to, you know, cling on to the Heart Foundation thing or anything like that. And um, that's about that. Davey had a hard time showing up in his matches. 
Yeah. How sad. Back have, injury. Have you, have, have Whatever. You even, have you been any, um, <laughs> do you, are you even in contact with Davey anymore or not at all? Uh, I haven't seen him. We're all a little up here in Calgary. I haven't seen him in quite a while. So lately I've heard he's back in England. Is he really? I yeah, I just got back to England myself. I was on a tour up there with Hammerlock Wrestling. How'd that go? Very successful. I was shocked. I was shocked at the response I had. Mm. So they're showing a lot of... Um, old, they do the classics uh, on the TV. Yeah, the 1986 wrestling's on uh, on WF, I mean, on England television now. Yeah, yeah. So people like to come see these scenes, you know, like to come see people they've seen before, know what they're seeing, you know. How's the quality of the guys there? Not bad, actually. Not bad. There was um, a guy named Finn, who I had never met before. I think he was with the WCW. Yeah, Chris Champion. He raced a long time ago. Yeah, he was Yoshi Kwan and, and Chris Champion. Yeah. Um, and then there was myself and there was a couple of English boys. Uh, pretty good talent. Any real standouts? Pardon me? Yeah. Any, any, any real standouts, standouts up there? I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Stand like like uh, any any standouts of the English guys. Oh, yeah, there was one real good standout. God, if I remember his name right now, <laughs> there was, actually there was a couple of guys. You know, they wrestle real hard style there, and then they practice that they shoe wrestle on every Sunday, and uh, they work real hard. There's one. There was one standout there. You know, I just couldn't. I just can't remember his name right now, and. Um, they sent a couple of guys over there to um, uh, Japan to do the no rules fights and stuff like that, where they tap out and stuff. That was like uh, maybe Gary Steele. Did you see Gary Steele? When, is you see who that yeah, guy? I think he is. Yeah, Gary Steele. Yeah, because yeah, I've seen him in Gary Japan a couple times. He's an excellent prospect. Mm -hmm. Really good attitudes and everything, you know. When you were down in Memphis, what did you think of some of the guys that they had there, the WF guys? Well, uh, Steve Regal was down there rehabilitating um, from some of the problems um, that he had, you know, due to uh, uh, medical problems and things like that. And, um, who else was there? Uh, Kay Crush. Mm -hmm. Kay Crush, yeah. yeah. And I, I work with him quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it really kind of pisses me off because... Uh, out of the six or eight guys I had to work with there, half of them made it. Mm -hmm. I, I would literally go over to their apartment and drag them out of there. I'd say, because they were sick and complaining, and I was working too hard, and this and that. And then Bruce Pritchard calls me and says, you know, <laughs> you're not a Marine sergeant, you know, you got to treat these guys with uh, kid gloves. I said, oh, shit, this man ever treated us with kid gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I want to do the same thing, you know. So, uh, so anyway, they're all a pretty good bunch. Uh, see, they had that girl named Bobcat. Yeah, she she never made it there for you know. No, she had a couple of tryouts, a couple of tryouts, and then um, uh, and then Blue Meanie was there, and he lost a lot of weight. Yeah. So uh, he got lost a lot of weight, and then I guess he went on to live with that girl who was a pornography star in ECW. Yeah, who was pretty and everything, but and then they had that guy, a uh, little white guy, reckless youth. Yeah, and he had a really good attitude. He could do do just about anything, you know. And uh, I, for some reason, I don't know what they they didn't like him. Maybe not big enough or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, very talented and uh, you know, good attitude. And then Jerry Lawler and his uh, wife, Kit. Kitty, Miss Kitty. Cat, the cat. Cat were there. Yeah. And they, and they come in and um, um, on the big TV shows we did at the casino, they come in and um, do their thing. You know, going going back going back to a totally different era, when you first broke in with uh, with Stampede, I mean now. Your background, a lot of people, I'm sure most people don't know this, um, you were a high school shot put record holder here in California. I was um, a champion. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and one of the top shot putters in the, in the world at one point. Yeah. And, uh, was, 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 was,
What are you doing? I went to UCLA on track and field scholarship. Yeah. And my coach Tom Telez there, and he coached uh, many, many. He coached um, Kerry Von Eric to be national champion. Also, a little bit of trivia there. Yeah, and the Kerry did the discus. Yeah. Yeah, Kerry Kerry was um, NC two A champion or something like that. He coached him, and uh, poor Kerry, dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so so now when you were there, were you there with Terry Albritton at the yes, same time? Yes, I was. He's a good friend of mine. How did you hear? How did you, remember, how did you ever hear about Terry Albritton? You told me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that you and you, you with uh, Terry, no, Terry Albritton was like a collegiate champion. Now, did you go to Calgary with him or not with him? Because I, well, I went up by myself. Okay. Ten bucks in my pocket and took a Greyhound up there to see Stu. Mm hmm. And, uh, and where, no, where, 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 no, where, like, where did this, like, uh, did you, did you hit like a, a wrestling bug, or like, what exactly happened to lead you to pro wrestling, lead you to Calgary with no money I was in your pocket? with the Dallas Cowboys. Mm hmm. And uh, I had no college experience, and Terry Albert, and they want the Cowboys wanted him bad. Mm hmm. So uh, did, no, did, he, did he play any college football, or was he just a shot putter also? He uh, uh, was a national champion at the same high school I went to in Newport Harbor Beach, in Newport Beach, California. Mm hmm. So here, uh, he was highly recruited there, and he's 6'4", per, you know, perfect height, weight, everything. And um, so he went to Stanford, and I went to UCLA. And uh, we both got fed up with the system, and we said, Let us, why don't we just go to the University of Hawaii, an independent school, and shop put together there, and so we can break a world record. So uh, he did. He broke the world record three times in a row over there, and uh, I floundered at around 66 uh, feet. I mm -hmm. didn't get one off, but we were training awfully hard. So we decided we had enough of the island. <laughs> and so Terry went back to Stanford, and I went back to UCLA and to finish our careers. And uh, also the Dallas Cowboys wanted to sign Albritton. And uh, he says, well, listen, uh, I haven't got a car or anything. Can, can you bring, can I invite my friend Jim Neidhart with me to the cow, Cowboy camp? <laughs> <laughs> so the Cowboys called me up and said, you want to play for us? I said, yeah, sure, you know. So, um uh, I am stand for, he la he, Terry Auburn lasted two days. I, was, I lasted five months. Now, now you, did you play in high school or just not college? Or? I was high school American in football. But okay, so, so you just did stuff. Okay, yeah, because I'm just thinking like you know like it's pretty hard if you've never played football to go to a pro camp. <laughs> yeah, especially breaking in the Super Bowl lineup. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I had high school skills, which you know, and um, the weight coach here at the, at the Cowboys knew me, Bob Ward knew me from before at Fullerton Junior College, and, and they knew me in my shopping. Whereas I was way stronger than anybody. I had Randy White in front of me and stuff like that. So you know, yeah, <laughs> they were pretty much walking over me. But I was so I was so short, they uh, they couldn't see me. And I was uh, low to the ground strength, and uh, I'm down there made the team. So uh, here I was on down in San Diego when uh, after this whole thing went, went down and this guy named Malin, the strength coach of the Chargers, he said, hey, why don't you, you got a million bucks in your body in wrestling. I said, what? <laughs> I said, I don't know about that. And he said, he, this guy named Malin sent me to uh, see a guy named Leo Garibaldi. Okay, I remember that name. And, uh, you know, so I watched him down there in San Diego when I saw Roddy Piper wrestle and uh, Moondog. Moondog Maine at night, he died down there, and mm -hmm. and anyway, um, so they, they went, they sent me up to uh, people in Los Angeles at the Olympic Auditorium, and so Gene LaBelle goes, what you want to see, you want to see Al Tomko or Stu Hart, we're going to wrestle. <laughs> Al Tomko. <laughs> you had not gotten the name of the Anvil yet, right? No. Or had you got the, yeah, you, so you went up to Calgary, um, I guess you were just about you, someone in Los Angeles, uh, Gene LaBelle, told you to go up to... So, is there any reason why you picked... Gene LaBelle used to run the Olympic Auditorium there. Sure. That was a while ago, though. Yeah, no, no, so, now, they they, 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 they threw these names, Al Tomko and Stu Hart, at you. Did you, like, did you know who Stu Hart was at this I point, or no? I had no idea who anybody was. Okay. So, so you didn't... Did you ask people you? about Al Tomko? What, what's that? Did you ask people about Al Tomko, or how did you uh, make the decision to go to Stu? Well, you know, um, I talked to Stu. You know, I, I heard a few bad things about Tomko, and I heard Stu was more of a... Uh, I, Stu talked to me on the phone, and I thought he was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, my God, this guy is drunk. I, I, I said, I should be able to take this guy easy, no problem, you know. I said, I'm going to go with the drunk guy and try to steal his money. <laughs> and wrong, 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 wrong. I went up there, and he almost killed me for three months in his basement. He trained me personally. And then I worked his circuit for the next three years. And then uh, I got the name The Anvil. He uh, promised me $500. <laughs> If I were to uh, compete in this anvil throwing contest at the Calgary Stampede, our right, town yeah. anvil, and uh, almost broke my back doing it, and there was uh, there was a bunch of uh, hockey players and blacksmiths and everything throwing this hundred pound anvil in front of this huge audience. Hundred so, pounds? Oh God! Oh man! <laughs> and so this little blacksmith girl, about a hundred pounds, just about beat me by an inch. <laughs> True story. I thought, God, I can't be beat by a hundred-pound blacksmith girl. It looks pretty good, you know. <laughs> so I just barely won it, barely, and that's how that's how I kind of uh, Alan Hart kind of gave me that name. Um, and now after after Calgary, you ended up in uh, Mid South Wrestling. Did they send you there, or how did how did you end up there? Yes, to uh, the junkyard. Uh, junkyard dog had just left. Uh, Calgary, he went down there and made that big, you know, got that Mid-South Wrestling going with that Junkyard Dog gimmick. I mean, yeah. he totally popped it. Unbelievably popped it. Sold out just everywhere. And then uh, between Stu and Junkyard Dog, they got me down there in the program. And so worked there for six months with uh, Butch Reed and Hacksaw Doug and, you know, Jake the Snake. And And... When you went to, uh, now how, did, how did you wind up, uh, you wrestled a couple other territories, Florida, Memphis, places like that. Yeah, I was how did you first... in Memphis, six months down in Florida, and then I got a call to go up to New York, and I've been there ever since. What was it What was it like in, in that era in uh, WWF? I mean, because that was, from a schedule standpoint, I don't think anyone really, today everyone, you know, like they, they do the four days a week and everything like that. I mean, I remember when those guys, you know, in the in that era, we're, we're coming to San Francisco, and I mean, like, it was like 28 days in a row on the yeah. road, for real. You know, no breaks, no going home. That was pretty tough. That was a tough period. Well, you're on for three weeks on, four or five days off. And that went on forever. And sometimes, sometimes they just left you on there, if you were important to the schedule. I remember Brett and I were on one time for uh, almost three months straight without going home or anything. It's going to drive you out of your mind. Yeah, a lot of guys. A lot of guys didn't have any road experience. Cracked up. They couldn't handle. Yeah. It. The Sheik has the record. Darren Sheik has the record of 108 days. 108 straight days on the road. Yeah. No, no, no wonder he's out of his mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. 108 days in a row. Oh, God! Without going home. Yeah. Can you imagine? Uh uh We got a question. I knew this was going to happen, and it was the very first email that came in on this. Uh, what's your take on everything that happened in Montreal? <laughs> wow. I, I just couldn't have uh, gone home. I, I had a, um, an eight-man match with uh, Shamrock and these guys. I just couldn't have gone home after that. I had to mm -hmm. hang around. Mm -hmm. Hang around the building. And um, so I guess Brett, and, Brett didn't want to give the belt up. And, um, you know, Vince wanted to put the belt on Sean. And uh, so they had to do it some way. I mean, Brad had a good deal with WCW and was all set to go, and, you know, it's a, it's a courteous thing to do is drop the belt of the group that you're leaving. Mm -hmm. But it was between Brad and Vince. and uh, So anyway, Brett went nuts down there on the floor, and there was a big sword pulled on him. And then we all go sit in the locker room. There's me and Owen, Davey, and Brad and everything on one side of the locker room, and then Tony Garia, Vince, Shane, Pat Patterson... You know, and all group on the other side. And Brett says, uh, tells Vince, you don't get out of the locker room. By the time I get done tying the shoe, I'm going to come over there and kick the shit out of you. So Brett ties the shoe, gets up, went over there and knocked him out. There was a big dog pile. And I was on top of the dog pile, in the middle of it, and, uh, Davey had brag dragged Brett out of there, and, uh, then was trying to go after Vince again. And uh, they just, you know, everyone gathered around Vince, saying, "Let him, let him, just give him, let him stand up so he can walk out on his own," you know. 
And that was about it. Who do you think knew about it going in? Do you think Michaels knew? Ah, uh, good question. I would have to imagine so. Mm -hmm. I mean, how could they not know? Yeah. All it was is uh, they did like the, the sharpshooter. Brett put the sharpshooter on Sean, and Sean reverses on Brett, and they were going to do a move out of that. So as, you know, Sean starts reversing the sharpshooter on Brett, and Brett's actually in a pin position, Vince yells to the timekeeper, ring the bell, ring the bell, ring the bell, hysterically. That night I ring the bell. Hefner gets out of the ring like a, you know, runs out of there. <laughs> as fast as he's ever run. Kept running. Kept running. Yeah. And uh, that was that. The fans were a little confused. Yeah, we all were. <laughs> so Brett threw, you know, threw a big tantrum down there, uh, worse than I could have ever done, and grabbed all the monitors and a lot of expensive things, started, started uh, breaking everything. And the fans were confused. And I, you know, I wasn't involved in the match at all, but I, I said, well, just out of old. Just we're, out of we're, old. We're, we're, Pardon me? By the way, you weren't, you know, weren't going to do a run-in, but what, cause Owen, wasn't Owen and Davey going to do, we were, they were on deck to do a run-in or something? We were on deck to do a run-in. But I think they did. We never got an answer. I couldn't get a straight answer out of anybody. And, uh, you know, Bruce Pritchard was, um, you know, being the monitor, I'm sure was in on it or knew about it or how could they not be or, well, I'm not. Well, if he's the one not giving you the cue to go, then he was in on it. Yeah. 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 But, uh, so I go back down there. I go to ringside down there and try to, because I, I thought they were going to riot. Uh, the fans were confused. They didn't know what was going on, so I, I finally got, got got Brett back, and then that's when they went in the locker room and had the big thing, you know. So I mean, mid you... everybody left, and I stayed there because I didn't have a contract. I thought that's why I could have served my jobs at, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're when you're si when you're sitting there watching Brett and Vince kind of going at it and everything, I mean, what were you thinking? Uh, were you thinking? Uh, were you thinking anything? It was like, like, whoa, this, this is something new. What the hell's going on? What, what the hell am I doing there? Uh, <laughs> my man, uh, we just kind of uh, stood up for each other because we. Um, well, Brett and I, for one thing, have been through so much together. You know, I felt that I owe him some kind of loyalty. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been through like you know WrestleMania two, the big one, WrestleMania three, four, five, six. So many, we've been through so many hair-raising experiences. But this is just another hair-raising hair -raising experience. But, um, yeah, you know, really, it's between Vince and Brett, and I should have just stayed up the hell out of it, but, you know, everybody just jumps in like you usually do in a fight, try to break it up. Mm hmm So. We're going to start taking phone calls right now. We're going to start with Wes in Virginia. Wes, what's going on? Hey, guys, how's it going? Good. Hey, I, I wanted to ask Jim, uh, what about the situation with Owen Hart, and uh, did you think they should have continued the show? And it's, you know, people have opinions on both ways, but I wanted to hear yours. Well, I got that uh, race where Dale Earnhardt got uh, killed. Did they stop the race there, or was it the last they, lap? They were already. The yeah. race was already over. Oh. I mean, because um, he got killed on the last lap, so I mean, there was that, that was. And that's, I mean, there have been races that have been stopped. There have been races that haven't been stopped. But that one, there really wasn't a decision because it was already over. I, mean, I was, I was on the in the back seat with Greg Valentine going to some other show. And we just heard about it, and uh, I didn't know. I've never seen the, the replay on it. And I imagine the fall uh, was so from like nine stories. Um, they didn't know if he was going to make it or not. From what I gather, but I haven't seen it, so I can't say for sure. But if a rest gets hurt, well, and then they take him off, you're going to continue the show because they don't have nothing really final there, you know. That's that's the take I get on it. I, I think they pretty much. I mean, he he was dead in the ring. Okay, and I, think I, they kept, I didn't see that. Yeah, they kept it. They they basically there were people who knew. Um, but they did keep it quiet. But later in the show, they made the announcement, and they still kept the show going. Like it was about an hour later, Jim Ross made the announcement to the people at home, but not in the building. People in the building never knew. Oh. But the people at home, which he goes, "We, have, I have to give you this horrible news that Owen Hart just died." And then they immediately went to this video of like, wasn't there something like someone hitting him with 
What was it what happened with Rock and Triple H? Because there was something in the video right after they announced the death that I'm going like, I can't believe they're showing this video now. Yeah. And it was like a real b violent video. Yeah, I can't remember what match. it was. What was I just remember later Vince went away in the ambulance. Vince went away in the ambulance. That was like right after Owen had died, which was also mm -hmm. very strange. Um, and then, um, but they showed the, something in the video was, was really weird to show. And then, um, then Rock and Triple H go out and do their match. And they did, I think there was one other match. I think probably Austin Undertaker. I don't remember exactly on that show. That shows, that point, by that point, that shows pretty much of a blur. Yeah. Um, that's a promoter's call. You know, there's only two kinds of promoters, you know, the bad and the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, my ass under the TV station, I have no idea. It seemed like the, the best thing to have done to have stopped the show out of respect. But what was even weirder was the next day. Um, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm mistaken. I'm mistaken. I'm thinking about the Pillman death. Yeah, the Pillman death is, was, was uh, you, were, you were there the, the, when, when Pillman died and they did yeah, the show. Yeah, they were waiting for him in St. Louis, and uh, he OD'd in his room. And I yeah. think it's two, two, story, two stories mixed up, but... It's kind of a correlation there a little bit where Tillman died in St. Louis, and the next day, right after, 24 hours fresh, to get his wife on the screen. Oh, is that weird? Yep. So, uh, you see the correlation there a little bit? Yeah. The, you know, explain to me, explain to the, it's just so fresh about how she didn't like the wrestling, didn't think it was right, and this and that, and it was a real tearjerker. I, I thought that was kind of in poor taste. I don't oh, know, yeah. too quick. And she wasn't she wasn't ready to be on TV. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, mentally, she, you could just tell that she just like she had no idea what she was saying or doing. No. You know, I mean, I she's, just you know, that was very poor taste. Yeah. But uh, you, got you know, you, you know, you were you were kind of in in the in the post the situation with Owen's death and then the big legal problems that went on for a long period afterwards. You were kind of. I don't know if you were neutral or you just kind of kept out of it, because I know, like, we'd have Brett on the show, and Brett was always, you know, the one thing I'll say about Jim is, is you know, like, Jim, you know, Jim never said anything. You know, you know what I mean? He never, he would, you know, he always said that, like, you know, you kept neutral, so that was fine. It wasn't like, you know, you know, he, you know, like, the family was split apart and everything. I mean, what were you, what was your thought? You just figured that you just had to stay out of it because everybody else was just at each other's throats, or? Um, well, it's. It, you know, it was, it was such a horrible thing. I was I was, wasn't there at the event. Um, the real problem was with Owen and his wife, you know, and uh, handling. You know, that, that was their personal problem, and then the, the and Stu and and Vince suing, you know, and Owen and Martha, Owen's wife, suing, and I really didn't think it had a lot to do with me. So I, I kind of, uh, you know. I won't tell you what I really think happened, but but uh, I've always kept quiet on what I what I really think happened. Mm -hmm. But um, but uh, it's not really not for me to say. I don't think mm -hmm. I wasn't there. So, Wes, is there anything else? Yeah, I just want to ask Jim one more. Uh, what was behind the breakup of the Hart Found that you and Brett uh, back in the WWF? I guess was it eighty nine or ninety around that time period. What was the kind of the insight into that? Well, the breakup behind there was um, Vince uh, uh, lent me uh, a lot of money to fight this loft suit, which was totally uh, bogus. Where the stewardess says I hit her on the airplane, this and that, and anyway, I won the one and a half million dollars and. Anyway, I owed Vince some money. I said, listen, I owe him like $150,000. I said, listen, can I just pay you back in quarterly um, pieces? And he got mad at me. And uh, so the next day, Brett and I were champions. We just had our new T-shirts out and everything. And he goes, Brett, we're going to give you everything you ever wanted. And then he went on to fire me in the next couple of months, you know. Mm. So that was fun. Yeah. So did he ever get his hundred fifty thousand dollars? Yeah. Oh, okay. So did. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I just didn't want to come out with a thing with nothing. Yeah. You know, as a guy, you know, I have a little something here. Like, can I just pay you off on, uh, on a quarterly royalty basis? Would that be all right? But um, that was the wrong move on my part. Yeah. Uh, who came up with the idea of who and why? <laughs> really? <laughs> what the hell was what was that all about? J.J. Dillon? 
Who came up with the idea of who? Um, <laughs> well, after I was a bad boy, I did something else wrong. I can't remember what. I think I smoked a marijuana cigarette, and they found it in my urine or whatever. Um, I was let go for a couple of weeks or a month or something like that, and they had to torture me. Uh, they brought me back and wanted me to wear a mask. And um, so they came up with the same name, Who, you know. Everybody knew it was me. You can see my body and stuff. But uh, it was different, you know. And then uh, I was in uh, Uniondale in New York there, and then I, and then I went out there and uh, wore the Heart Foundation outfit. And So it was just, I don't know who gave the idea name Who. I think it was J.J. You, you wore the Heart Foundation outfit with the Who mask? No, no, no. I, I, wore, okay. I did the Who gimmick, and then I came out in another match with Sid, I think, and did the Heart Foundation outfit and my wrestled okay. that. So kind of mm -hmm. two characters for the price of one. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, so whatever gave me that gimmick, did they just give up on it? Had you served your time? Uh, yeah, I served my time, and uh, they gave up on it, and then they um, went back to the Heart Foundation thing. Let's go to uh, Greg in Rhode Island. Greg, you're next up. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Jim, my, my question is for you. Uh, I was definitely a big fan of the Heart Foundation, uh, even when you guys were heel back in 97. And um, obviously, one of the questions I've always I've always wanted was uh, was your last television appearance with the WWF. It was uh, shortly after um, the uh, the Montreal incident um, with Bret Hart when um, on that Raw, <laughs> uh, yeah, D Generation X. It was like a tease that you were going to be the fourth member, and they teased right, it all yeah. night. And in the main event, it was just they just they turned on you and they beat you and then they they did that spray paint with WCW. Did you know about it? When yeah. They, that, they, that they spray painted WCW on you like that? Oh, yeah. But uh, you know. Did they know you were hitting a like WCW that, at the time? Like the Is that why they wrote it? it? I mean, huh? you, did, did, did everyone like had you already you had already given notice and and you were going to go or was that or? Um, <laughs> yeah, but I you know it was kind of in the middle of everything and. Um, Basically, I'm pretty. I do pretty much what I'm told, you know. And I was telling, I was working with China. I was telling China, you got to do more in the ring, you know. I think that's the first time she ever slammed anybody. I said, you got to pick me up and slam me. Do more with me, you know. Don't just stand out there. So. Um, she really laced in you, didn't she? No. Not the four hours. Working on working on her, uh, perfecting her nut shot. <laughs> and. Uh, and then I said, you know, Pat Patterson goes, well, you got to pick him up to him. We were telling that, you know, and um, she's very nice. And then they did the WCW thing, and then that was it. I've always thought that the WCW and WWF were working together anyway. Really? Behind the scenes? Uh, really? Stu Hart told me that a long time ago. Oh, okay. But um, well, I didn't care. I was going for three times the money that I was making with New York. What was... What was your thoughts uh, of the Heroes of Wrestling show? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> with Jake the Snake Roberts. That's and wrestling right, Jake yep. the Snake Roberts. <laughs> well, that's the good one. Actually, I actually I felt pretty good in that match. But um, the, the, this little uh, promoter, uh, independent promoter, oh, can't remember his name now, runs out of uh, northern upstate New York. My, my, Mike Henry, maybe? No, Mike. Michael, Michael Bryan? Michael Bryan. Okay, Michael Bryan, yeah. Real nice guy, always treating me great. He goes, yeah, Jim, we want you to do a job for Jake. I said, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, okay. He comes back like, five minutes later, he goes, well, you have to do a job for Jake. I said, I'm not doing it. What? How many times have I tell you guys? I'm not doing it. Jake's back here smoking a crash pipe, you know, and I uh, didn't bother to share it or anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, I said, this guy's smoking a crack pipe back here, and you want me to put him over? I don't know what he's going to do in the ring. <laughs> that, was prof that, was being, that was a prophecy, wasn't it? Yeah, so then Tim was there, uh, that Mike goes, Jim, I uh, want you a job for a I said, how many times do I have to say I'm not doing it? <laughs> so I go out there, I make mentors, we haven't got any finish whatsoever. Jake comes out and goes, um, all right, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll, pu I'll put you over. And Bundy was my partner, and Yokozuna was Jake's partner. And um, Jake was so out of it that uh, I remember, and well, damn near killed him. 
You know, we managed to get the match through, but then Jake started doing all that shit with the snake and putting it in his mouth and his crotch and everywhere. Had that horrible interview. and <laughs> It was quite the night to remember. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. Yeah, I know. Greg, anything else? Oh, uh, no, that's all, guys. Okay, thanks. We're going to go to Charles in Pittsburgh. Charles, what's up? Hey, Jim, what's going on? Hi. Hey, um, yeah, because this has to do with that uh, story you're talking about, Jake. Um, because on scoopswrestling.com, they had an interview with Jake, and he said, uh, they asked him about the Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view, and he said the reason that he got drunk or whatever messed up was because uh, he was uh, he was kind of shooken up because he said you threatened him with bodily harm if he didn't put you over in that He's a liar. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, right. Jake's That's a good excuse. Friends. What? Someone must threaten him with bodily harm every day. <laughs> He was and probably afraid that I'd grab his pipe from him and wouldn't give it back or something. <laughs> and he said he didn't know what to do, so he said he just turned to the the drug. To the bottle. He yeah, turns to the, the Lord pipe. and goes, Lord, what should I do? <laughs> no, Jake's one of my best friends. Yeah, you know, it wasn't, you know, Jake and I, we, you know, it doesn't work like that. I'm not going to threaten that. I didn't threaten anybody with bodily harm. Yeah, but I was, yeah, but I was also going to ask you about the, like, heroes of wrestling. Uh, like, uh, what do you think could have been different to, like, where could it turn out to be a success? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I never saw it. <laughs> you were just there. <laughs> you were lucky. Uh, yeah, I heard it wasn't any good. I was just trying to look good myself. I wasn't worried about anybody else. Yeah. Well, I'm glad because you'd have been really worried if you had. <laughs> if you had seen everybody else. But, uh... Hello? Yeah. He lost okay. Charles. Okay. Um, this is from Scott here. Uh, emailed in and goes, uh, are you still in contact with Brett, and how is Brett doing as far as uh, the concussion and any post-concussion syndrome or anything like that? Yeah, I see Brett every now and then. He lives up the road here. We go mountain biking together every now and then. And the concussion seems, you know, it seems a little slow, but we're getting better. What about Dynamite Kid? Have you been in any contact with Dynamite Kid at all? I was supposed to see him when I went up to England last month. A 12-day tour, and I really want uh, the last little town we were at. He was so close to there, and uh, he's very bitter about the English wrestling and stuff, you know. And uh, I really want to come up there and have him help us uh, do maybe some TV work or get involved with our program because it was pretty successful. But no, I never did get to see him. I just got his email. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you, but regarding the WWF days, um, remember the, the match? In fact, this is probably the first time you guys won the tag team titles where Dynamite was basically crippled and they yeah. brought him in the match in Tampa. I mean, yeah. what's, your remember, what's your remembrances of that? Well, we had to take the belt, and Davey Boy, Davey Boy could wrestle good, and uh, Dynamite's back was so bad. We figured if, uh, well, if we just do Dynamite before he gets out of the door, then Davey would have to fight the match by himself. Well, you know, and eventually we took the belts that way. I mean, do you think, you know, I mean, Dynamite wasn't even walking at that point in time. And, uh -uh. and they flew him in from Calgary to Tampa and kind of, like, brought him to the ring somehow. And, you know, you just got rid they of him real quick. never made it to the ring, I don't think. Yeah. No, I, I know he was never tagged in or anything like that. Never made, I don't think he ever made it outside the door. Outside the locked mm -hmm. door. We jumped him as he came outside the door, so we never really had him come too far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you think, I mean, at the time that that was, like, a, a little extreme to even bring him in? Or do you think I it's just business? I, I, I was just glad to get the belt. Yeah. Now, what about the match? There was a match a couple years later where you guys wrestled the Rockers. I think it was in Ohio. I may have the state wrong. It might have been Indiana. But anyway, it was they won the belts, and then it was reversed. It's Fort Wayne, Indiana, now that I think about it. They won the belts, then it was reversed. Then um, they did some story about the ropes were loose or the ropes were the broke ropes or something. Broke, broke There's two out of three falls, and first the second rope broke, then the top rope broke. I said, how are we going to do this? The next two falls, <laughs> if there's no ropes, yeah. the, the finishes are off the ropes. Mm. All the finishes were off the ropes. Oh, my God. <laughs> so um, here Marty and Sean were ready to take the belts, yeah. But since the top ropes broke, there wasn't a lot we could do about it, and uh, after the match was over, they never got the belts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, okay, this is someone who just emailed in. The video that we were talking about, oh, my God. See, Ness, I remember something's really weird. It was um, 
Rock was in a coffin, and Hunter was destroying the coffin with a sledgehammer, and That's this aired right, like. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, I, cause mm -hmm. I remember watching it, going, I cannot believe they aired this video. You know, but whatever. Uh, let's, let's see what else. Um, is uh Charles up? Sam. Okay, we're gonna go to Sam. Sam, what's up? Hey, Edville, how's it going? Good. Um, I have a couple questions for you. I remember in '93 you were in WCW for like two days. Uh, whatever happened with that? Two days? No, I think I was there a little longer than that. But uh, they were they were 1993. They were um, kind of uh, you know they ran out of that little studio in Atlanta. They were you know running little southern towns, and they weren't quite as big as they were. And I just came in for some dailies for them. Okay. You came in for a certain amount of money for a day. Were you surprised when they finally went out of business, or did you kind of see it coming when you were in there? Um, well, they're, they're a broadcasting company, and they're not a wrestling company like the WWF. Mm -hmm. And I found it very funny to go in there and work for them, and, you know, the, the girl telling you what to do worked for Budget Rent-A-Car two weeks ago, you know. And so <laughs> I found it very odd to work for people who weren't wrestling people. Mm hmm were you asked to be in the gimmick battle, Battle Royal is who? Was the one at WrestleMania? Oh, at WrestleMania? Yeah. Oh. Was I in the gimmick battle, pardon me? Oh, no, 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 they had, they had a gimmick battle royal. Do you want to know if you were asked best. to be in the gimmick battle royal is who? No, nobody ever said thing and one thing to me. And yeah. at, the, at the Heroes of Wrestling, did the reason King Kong Bundy and Yoko run out is because Jake was so, like, uh, stoned? Good question. Um... Uh, we had that damn snake. God knows what he was doing with that snake, for one thing. <laughs> it was everywhere. That was hilarious. And uh, so, yeah, he was doing kind of uh, illicit, let's say, things with that snake, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so those guys just kind of came. No, that, that was like the whole thing where that thing turned into a tag. That was pretty much booked. As far as that goes, that was booked that way that night, right? I don't think so. Oh, it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> was there supposed to be two singles matches or something like that? It was originally two singles matches. Yeah, I know yeah, that. yeah. That was Yoko King Kong Bundy. Yeah. And then as time got closer to you know going out, we you know they kept asking me, Jim, you're gonna have to do us. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not. So we just had to kind of make that one up. Yeah. But I remember Bundy was just a little bit out of shape, and he he dropped a knee. <laughs> on Jake's neck, I swear to God, I, I, lucky Jake's got a neck at all anymore. He really dropped it on him hard. And um, how is that? How is the uh, bulldog doing? The bulldog. I've heard that he's over in England right now. I haven't seen him up here in Calgary. Okay. And I also I met a uh, I met a uh, Brett on Saturday, and he looks pretty good. He looks like Brett, he can get Brett back on in Saturday? the ring. Yeah. He did some autograph show in New York. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I met him in Yonkers. Yeah. He was doing all right? Yeah, he looks pretty good. He looks like he can get in the ring, just as long as his head's okay. Yeah. I don't, think, I don't think he'll be wrestling again, though. Oh, you think he's retired for good? Uh, every time I say a wrestler's retired, any time I say a wrestler's retired, it usually ends up being, like, something well, that you should never say. So I will never say for good, but I think that if he's as close to for good as anyone. As, as anyone. Okay, uh, thanks, guys. If there's, if there's a such thing as a for good. Let's go to Sean in Pennsylvania. Sean, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? Um, I had uh, just a couple quick questions. I got to one of them already. Um, what, and three questions. Uh, one, uh, Jim, what are your thoughts on traditional big man, small man tag teams? They've kind of disappeared, and I think uh, business kind of suffers for it because I thought it was always a good way to get two people who have different skills and have them complement each other in the ring. Yeah, well, you, you, you don't see that too much anymore. Um, it always does kind of, you know, you're always waiting for the big guy to get in and help out the little guy or, and then it does tell a good story. Yeah. Um, huh, good question. You, you know, I think it's weird that the girls wrestle the guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost every time. It never looks right, does it? No, I don't like that. Yeah. But it's a, you know it's a, it's a millennium you know it's a 2001 things are changing you know Jericho uh, and uh, China I know had an exceptional match where it's just kind of odd that a man and a woman would wrestle together I don't I don't know that one wasn't so odd <laughs> it's done nothing for business 
that's the thing, you know. Because <laughs> they're a business, you know. I don't know when someone's going to learn, you know. If it's one thing, if it, 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 it worked and it drew, it never draws. I, I actually think that, that China and Jarrett, because of the way the angle went, was was a pretty good thing. Yeah. After that, though, after that, I think that it was just you're. After that, I agree with you, though. I think that it doesn't do anything for business. And I think I don't think anyone really wants to see it, except for I think there's some people, some women fans. I think there's some women fans that are men that are man haters that kind of got a big kick out of China beating yeah. guys, but but that's a real small percentage of the audience. Yeah, Hunter wants to see it. Uh, I Not anymore. <laughs> these last two <laughs> questions, I'm going to group them together. What are your thoughts on Shawn Michaels as a wrestler and as a person? And what are your thoughts on uh, drugs and wrestling? What, me? Yeah, you. What, what are you. my thoughts on Shawn Michaels? I, I, I always thought he was a good guy. We always go along very well. And uh, what are your thoughts on uh, drugs and wrestling? What kind of drugs? Uh, recreational and prescription. Um, well, you know, we have no union, so nobody should be telling us what to do. But a promoter's got, uh, you know, his obligations to keep, uh, to keep with insurance companies and things like that, you know. And a promoter wants to keep his guys healthy. And God knows we've had our share of overdoses and problems with drugs, you know. So you've really got to, you know, you've really got to watch it and keep yourself healthy. How would you compare it? I mean, I know the year is different because you were, you were much, much younger and it was years and years ago. But how would you compare drug usage in track and field with drug usage in pro wrestling. As far as I'm talking about, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about like more like the steroid use as, as opposed to the, you know. Well, the like, shock uh, what is when I was doing we were the ones that started the whole damn thing out. Mm hmm And the lifters, and that wasn't, no, no one was even, no one even thought of using uh, any anabolic steroids. But when I was at UCLA, uh, Tom Telez had, had insisted that I take them. Huh. And he injected them me, into me himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is the only way you're ever going to get a world record. And um, stuff like that, you know. Other than that, I don't think any uh, anybody else is even using anabolic steroids except the shot putters and weight throwers and the Olympic lifters. In, the, in those days? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it certainly, you know, years later, I think pretty much, I mean, I don't know everybody, but certainly spread like in the last 20 years like crazy. Yeah. The problem now, when you, when, go ahead. Me. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The problem is, uh, guys' bodies, uh, aren't, uh, some, a lot of guys' bodies aren't, don't accept that anabolic steroid drug, and that's what causes problems. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never had any problems. I'm in completely perfect condition. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, but, um, um, I know Vince McMahon watches, uh, you know, there's some pretty big guys out there, too, you know. <laughs> but he, he watches his athletes and drugs very carefully and tries to keep everyone as healthy as possible. When when you were there, this is like the eighties, okay? She's talking talking about that period. I mean, what were you? Because because there were there were guys there. I mean, it's just, I mean, I mean, it probably got worse later. Uh, but but certainly during the eighties, there was a period there where they had some you know guys like you know like the warlord and stuff. I mean. I mean, how do these guys get like that? You know what I mean? And, and what I mean, percentage of guys do you think were on steroids in the 80s in the WWF? Well, I don't, I, I can't say for sure. You know, um, see, the problem with the steroids and, you know, your schedule is so hectic. And anabolic steroids help you recuperate fast, and that's the deal. If you're wrestling, you know, all week long, your body is really sore. You need that little bit of extra energy and the recuperation and able to perform at a, at a maximum level you know you really do i know that you would never cross paths with him because your career started after his ended but did Stu ever tell you stories about johnny valentine johnny valentine was he did yeah and uh, johnny valentine was um the master at pulling ribs and going out to the ring with mustard gas you know what that is no i don't it's a little thing you hold in a bottle in your hand <laughs> And you squirt it at somebody, and it burns their skin and stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I want to make, make two quick mentions, and we get back to the phone calls. One is that tomorrow night at 10:30 on MTV, MTV Diary is going to do a feature on The Rock, which they just filmed last week. And also, this is this is whoa. Who's here and who's not? Did we lose Jim? Okay, we'll get Jim back. Okay, well, I'll just read this one real quick. 
Um, the Stampede uh, tag team match that your email asked about today was Dynamite Kid and Johnny Smith against Davy Boy Smith and Chris Benoit. They did the tag team to set up a Dynamite Davy Boy match and feud. I remember when they did the Dynamite Davy Boy feud when they split and they turned Dynamite heel. But the match never happened because before they could get the match, Davy Boy was injured in an auto accident. So then they ended up, Dynamite ended up feuding with Owen Hart. I remember they had about three weeks worth of great matches. I remember that. And then uh, before Dynamite could do the feud with Chris Benoit, which they were going to do, Stampede Wrestling closed. So, so that's the story on uh, Dynamite Kid and Chris Benoit. So they never did actually do a match. Jim, you're back. Yeah. Okay, anything else on Johnny Valentine before we hit the calls? Um, well, um, uh, Greg Valentine broke in Stuart's territory, of course, but uh, jo um, if you just talk to about Johnny Valentine, you worry, you know, you probably talked to you for days about him. Yeah, I would think so. But uh, I remember uh, Johnny Valentine used to make a very, very slow, deliberate entrance to the ring. And uh, just it really, really had the people believe in him and mesmerized the people. And was really, really a tremendous draw, a tremendous wrestler, but a tremendous river, too. Let's go to Greg in California. Greg, you're up with Jim Neidhart. I ran into the British Bulldog Hello. four weeks ago, and he said to me, I'm your wicked. All right, he's gone. God, he waited, like, so long for that one. Okay, let's go to Matt. Matt, Matt what's up? Canada. How's it going, Matt. guys? Going good. Um, this is a question about the new WCW. Just wondering what kind of ring they're going to use as far as the ropes and stuff. Are they going to go with the traditional WCW stuff or uh, that's a good the, question. Like WWF ring? I don't know the answer to that. Have you heard anything on that, Brian? I have no idea. Like any guess? Because they, they, they did buy the rings. So they made I would think that they would start out using the same rings just because those guys are used to working in them. Yeah, you don't want to break a whole right? crew that's used to a WCW ring. In with like a WWF ring on the first show, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe phase them in later, but I don't know. Yeah, I use they, the same rings. A smaller ring, right? Mm-hmm. That's a smaller ring, yeah. Like smaller, smaller and the steel price. cable ropes. Yeah, the, the elevator cable ropes. I think what it is. Yeah. You just okay, take a couple of steps and you're across the ring. Jim, hey, you know, like let's talk, let's talk about the, the ring, the rings real quick. Um, what was the difference between the rings and the ring in uh, Stampede Wrestling, WWF, and WCW for you, or did it, do you really even care? Oh, the ring. There's a big difference in the rings. Uh, as far as the WF, WF is 20-20. That's a monster. You're running a football field there. Mm -hmm. From turnbuckle to turnbuckle. On WCW, a couple of steps across the ring, you're there. It was like 16 by 16, wasn't it? Yeah. They said 18, but it seemed more like a 16er. It was much easier to work in because you don't take so many steps. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but, um, I, you know, once you get used to smaller rings, it, you know, they add five years to your career. But if you're in the, you're in the WWF and you're going to get thrown from one turnbuckle to another turnbuckle. You better be ready to run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. How about the ropes? Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry. How about the ropes? I would much prefer the WWF ropes. Really? Yeah, because you can hit them. You can't hit the WCW ropes. They're too hard. Mm -hmm. You'll bounce, you'll hit them and bounce back and land in your ass. But for springboarding, like for the Flyers, I think that the WCW ring better for them. Yeah, I think they like that a lot better. Well, the yeah. real small Because they're tighter. It's easier to do a springboard off them. Like the loose ropes, you never know what's going to happen. Well, sometimes those, uh, uh, the rope ropes, the WWF, are pretty tight. But now and then, they, as the show goes on, they get loose, you know. Mm hmm But, uh, yeah, the, you know, even the lighter guys, you know, like the tighter ropes. I think those cables, you'll never see anyone like in WCW tied up in the ropes like in WWF. It's just it's no not possible. No way you can't tie them up too tight. So that's how Foley lost his ear, eh? But uh, yeah. one thing, the major difference is in the tag situation between the, the two the two rings. Like the smaller rings, you know, you can't tell as much of a story as you can with a bigger ring as far as tags, you know? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's, 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 you, yeah, yeah. You're so much closer and everything. Yeah, you make one little movie ready to tag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's so much, of a, you got more room, like Battle Royals are better than the WF ring because they've got more room and, uh, more room to move around and do things. It's a much bigger stage. Anything else, Matt? No, that's cool. Thanks, guys. Okay, let's go to George. George, what's up? What's up, fellas? 
I just wanted to ask Jim uh, one quick question, really. I wanted to know how you felt about uh, some of the Dungeons graduates that are wrestling today, like you know Benoit, Jericho, Lance Storm. Uh, we're all seem to be doing pretty good. I, 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 I see a lot of similarities in their styles, of course, as everyone does. Well, everybody's trying to. Uh, uh, we all kind of copy Dynamite. Mm-hmm. And um, they just, you know, Calgary even went a real good style up here when it was going, you know, when it was really flourishing. Mm-hmm. Very believable, technically. Well, it's kind of a combination between uh, American, English, and Japanese styles. It's kind of a combo and the Calgary style, you know. What do you think of uh, the, when they had you in WCW? Uh, what do you think of the way that they had you put over your stories inside of the ring versus working in the WWF? We didn't get much of a story at all, and uh, as soon as we got some kind of a story, uh, they canceled it. Yeah. <laughs> we got good money, but they really shit on us. Yeah, yeah. They made a lot of mistakes. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. I'm a very big fan of the Heart Foundation, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Dave, Brian, talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Okay, let's go to, uh, is it uh, Tim next? Yeah, hello, guys. Right. Hey, how are you, Tim? Hey. Pretty good. I have a question for Anvil, and then uh, one or two things for Dave. Uh, sure. First, is there any talk about Bret Hart getting back into wrestling in any capacity? Um, I don't think so at this moment. No? All right. Um, and for Dave, um, I, I don't know if you guys have talked about this recently or in the past, but I've noticed that WWF is putting up some like subliminal images during their programming of XFL. <laughs> like football? Yeah. Have you noticed that? I have noticed that, and the Dukes of Hazard. Oh, I haven't noticed the Dukes, but er, look, anybody... Oh, I've seen the, du- the Dukes, but I, f- I always assume that that's TNN doing, not the... Yeah, I, I think it's just TNN see- having a screw-up in the feed. <laughs> yeah, that's know. what I always figured. Because it doesn't make sense to me that they would have a videotape rolling and they're cutting to it. Like, they would have to have that tape rolling, so it's kind of, like, intentional to an extent. And oh, the football, time, the football, you know, is intentional. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> I thought that's illegal. And then the second thing is, is that... Well, he owns both shows. I don't know if it's illegal. <laughs> well, like, movie theaters, they can't, like, show... Well, just stuff. the act of doing the subliminal, you know. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, the times that they do it in, like, this this past Monday, if anybody re- recorded the show, they could see it. It's when, right before they cut to the commercial, Trish Stratus is there stretching, showing her cleavage and her curves, and then they cut really quick to the football, and then they cut That back. was disturbing. Huh? <laughs> that yeah, particular like, moment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the other thing is that this, this Undertaker, Kane, Triple H, Stone Cold, they're beating it. It's been, it's dead. It's been hung, stabbed, and drowned. And it needs to end. Uh, they're gonna do another pay-per-view with it, and there's no way, like me or my friends, are gonna purchase this. It's so disgusting. They work pretty yeah. hard, though. They might work hard, but it's like, geez, it's so disturbing. It really is. You want to see something yes. different in there? Yeah. Yeah, sure. something new. Everyone's, cra- every, you know, it's, 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 it, everyone's craving like. Something different in the main events right now, um, especially because Rock left, so that left one babyface spot open, and then Austin turned, so they figured, okay, this is the golden opportunity to elevate somebody new. But instead, it was you know they brought Undertaker back in that spot, and, and I don't know. It's, I mean, so we've heard nothing positive about it. Oh I mean, yeah, so. it's horrible. I hate it. And what's the deal? What I mean, if they're gonna put Undertaker for another month in the main event, why can't they turn him into a dead man again, like? In some storyline, well, it's going back in time. You know, you, yeah. you got to go yeah. forward in time. If you if you watch Undertaker, I, he's never worked better in his life, though. He's really wrestling really well. Yeah. He, he wrestled real well at the pay per view. That's yeah. best he's looked since he's been back. So he's really trying to hold his own. There's got to give him a little bit of credit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I kind of miss the old dead guy. That's what. Yeah. Like, everybody wants <laughs> back. <laughs> well, that's all. Thanks, guys. Uh, Jim, we got a couple of emails. Um, about uh, Australia. Are you going to be going to the Superstars of Wrestling Tour in Australia over the summer? Well, I sure hope I am. Uh, I was supposed to go there with uh, Animal and Legion Doom and everything at the beginning of March. And that, guy, and then I went to England, and uh, I guess it got pushed back to June or something, but no one said hide in the hair to me. Hmm. So you haven't, even heard, you, you haven't even heard anything from them since then? No, they're supposed to send me money, and I signed a contract with them, and... And, uh, you know, uh, Joe from the Legion of Doom, 
has organized this thing, and uh, I don't know what's up. There's another question here from Chris who says, uh, this is WrestleMania 6, so this is Trump Plaza yeah. in... Oh, wait, 6 is... 6 was uh, the... 6 uh, was Toronto Sky Dome, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Toronto Sky Dome. Do you, okay, it says Hard Foundation Bolsheviks match. Why was it a one-minute match? Good question. Um, I don't know. Well, you know, you, when you get out there in front of six, 7,000 people, you like to show your wares a little bit. I, you know. <laughs> uh, I had some guy... Not to mention 60,000. Yeah. Uh, I... I uh, some guy over in England, he, he was just ecstatic. He thought it was one of the best matches I've ever seen. I, I, I can't believe you're saying this, you know. <laughs> I guess it makes you look strong or whatever, but I, I guess they're running out of time or something. I don't know. So, so, so but I mean, when you were, was, was it something where you were just cut back on time when you got out there because they were running late, or was it, or, or like, like when you went there, did they say, hey, you know, you're going to just go run over them? Uh, it, well, that was the night that uh, Hulk dropped the belt to Warrior. Yeah. yeah. So that was a big night. And so that was a big change in the guard there. And uh, everything was really focused on that. And I think it was kind of a time thing. Mm -hmm. Any good prospects up there in uh, Calgary? Any prospects in Calgary? We're not doing a lot right now here. Mm -hmm. We're not resting a lot now. So uh, it's hard to say, really. Yeah. What about um? What about Matt Rest? Do you know any of those guys? Like Ted Ted Annis and those guys? Yeah, he related to me. He's my nephew. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't heard much about it. I, I did a, I did a little skit with them to uh, get the pilot going. Mm hmm. And uh, it seems like a cute little show. Wrestlers uh, under twenty one and uh, they have a bunch. They have two hundred screaming girls there and uh, and just younger wrestlers doing the stuff and. Pertaining strictly toward a, uh, you know, a small, younger, back, uh, younger kids. So, I heard Eric Bishop was involved in that. Mm hmm But, um, I just haven't heard too much more from it. I think they were going to ask me to do something. Do something else mm -hmm. there, but um, I haven't heard from him. Okay. We're going to run to James in Kentucky. James, how are you? Pretty good. How y'all doing? Good. 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 Hey. Dynamite Dave. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, Jim? Yeah. Um, I'm a, uh, I'm a real big fan of yours. And I was wanting to know, are you going to be in the new WCW? Um, I'll tell you, I'm training really hard and, um, making a real effort at making a serious comeback with either one of the groups or both groups or the combined group or whatever. But I would definitely like to make a, um, a real nice comeback with one of the two groups. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I got a, a question for you, too. Mm hmm Okay. It's about the Raw on uh, Monday night. I watched it. And it, they had low rating. What was their rating, by the way? It was a 5.0. It, uh, it was down a tenth from the week before. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not it's pretty much the low. Same. Yeah, it's not. I wouldn't call it a low rating, but you know, it's like the rating. The rating has hasn't moved since WCW went off the air, so I think that that's got to be disappointing. I'd call it a disappointing rating, but not, you know, 5.0 this day and age for a cable show, you can't call that a low rating. Hey, hey, Dave. Yes. At the end of that match uh, on the main event, uh, Stone Cold and him. Yeah. Uh, do you think that was a little bit too violent? Oh, with the chairs and everything like that? Yeah, yeah hitting them. It's a, to, you know, it's like it's to me, it's just the same as the same thing you've done beating. for weeks. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not, uh, there's uh, sometimes Vince McMahon forgets there's little children watching this, and no, he doesn't forget. He just I doesn't... don't think he forgets. He just doesn't really care. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> well, there is no real censorship on any of the TV shows anyway. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, is uh, Brett coming back to wrestling soon? No. 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 Okay, Jim, would you tell Brett I say hello? I will do. James from Kentucky. James from Kentucky. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I still think about Owen every day. And uh, I'll never forget Owen. Yeah, a lot of people do up here, too, and all over the world. Yeah. Tragic. It's horrible. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's nice talking to you. And... All right. Thanks, James. Okay. Jim, you know, um, you mentioned earlier we were talking about the thing. How did how did that you know the Owen Hart news? How did that like 
you were, I guess you said you were doing an independent show or something. How did, like, how did you get that news? I was right in the back seat going to the hotel after a show with Greg the Hammer Valentine. And, and uh, I get a call from someone on my cell phone from Calgary told me about it. But, uh, you know, we didn't know what to believe until we got back to the hotel. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, what's that like? Because you've probably gotten phone calls over the years. Somebody died, and it turned out to be, you know, I know I have. Even Brett got that one in WCW about Stu. Brett, right before, that's right, right before pay-per-view, Brett got a phone call from that Stu had died. You know, right yeah. before the, right before a match, and he ended up doing the match, and it was not a good match or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, the, it's yeah, like, I so, remember so that. yeah. Um. Yeah, you never know what to, to think. There's, you know, so many uh, pranksters out there with professional wrestling. I've read uh, a couple of occasions that I have died myself two times. <laughs> That's right. So, now, now, that must be really eerie. Yeah. I've done all kinds of bad things, and I've died this and that. You know, people, you know, jeez. It's amazing that people will gossip, and I, I think that's a very poor taste to have someone, you know. Oh, God, yeah. Some, you know... Uh, that's why that, that, that those those always scare me when you because we've been on the show many times where like you know like there's been internet rumor about somebody dying and 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 at times it's been true and at times it's been false it just like scares me I always freeze up because I go like it's like what do you, you know, how do you uh, it's just I don't know it's like every couple yeah, months someone has to die I, on the I, internet I, yeah I mean, the, thing, or the thing I always I'm afraid I'm afraid of is someone's going to call up on the show and ask about it and when you don't know the answer then what what do you say because it's like you know, I don't know. I mean, like, like with because I remember the day Bobby Duncan died, and you know, I had known, a, I had certainly heard about it on the sh before we did the show, but I hadn't got it confirmed by anyone, so I didn't bring it up. And I was going, God, I hope someone doesn't call up and ask me because it, it may be true, but I just don't know. And, and that one turned out to be true. But then, yeah, there was one time we were on the show, and it was like all over. You know, Mabel died. You know, in fact, he was alive and didn't die at all. So that's pretty pretty strange. Um. Anyway. Okay, we got Mike. Go Mike, Mike, what's going on? Uh, not too bad. How you doing, guys? Hi, Mike. Doing good. Uh, Jim, I had a question for you. I'm not sure if anybody asked you this during the show because I only got on about an hour ago. Um, how did Vince McMahon convince you to do the Who gimmick? Uh, he says, well, he calls him and says, we've got a spot for you. We want to put a mask on you. We want to get away from the Heart Foundation thing, do this and that. And I said, okay. <laughs> it's a job. It's hard to wrestle with a mask on, by the way. Did, did you did you find it kind of under, Have you ever worked with a mask before? No, I hope I never have to again. But it's hard; you can't see out the sides. Mm -hmm. so you got to look, look at everybody straight ahead. Did you gain Did you gain an appreciation for Mexican wrestlers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they did all that stupid commentary off the Abbott and Costello deal. Oh yeah. Who's that in the ring? Yes, that is who. Yeah, it was kind of crappy. Yeah. So, somebody, that's probably what it was, is that somebody had seen that Abin Costello routine and go, we're going to Probably Vince character. Russo. <laughs> yeah. Was Russo, was Russo there at the time? I believe so. Wasn't he uh -oh. big Venom or something like that in the ring? I don't know what he's doing now. Last time I saw he was in the, trying to wrestle in the ring. <laughs> he was. Yes, he did. Yes, he got, he got like three concussions in like four matches. He so didn't get one Rick good Flair. match with Ric Flair of all people. That's right. He had a good match with Ric Flair. It was amazing because now, I mean, that, that, that was the proof that Ric Flair... It, whenever Ric Flair had a bad match, it was it, 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 there had to be something wrong because Ric Flair had a good match with Vince Russo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and Russo's first ever match. Had a good match with Luger. I, was, I like to, I like to ask you guys a question, a real short question. Sure, Would that be possible. Yeah. Of course. What the hell has happened to the XFL? Is it over? Is it done? Or is it a good good ratings? Or ratings were terrible. Um, it's not done yet, but it's in grave jeopardy. Uh, Publicly, the WWF is saying that they're absolutely 100% going to do a second season, but it may not happen because NBC is definitely not going to run it next year, and U U UPN is uh, kind of given hints that they won't, but they haven't made an official decision, and if UPN doesn't, I think that they won't be able to do it just because TNN alone, I mean, it, there's just no way. Even with UPN and TNN, there's no way, but they may, you know, publicly they said if we don't have a, reg a, a, a major network, we won't, we won't do it. So it's really up to a uh, chain because, uh, you know, with any new league, they should give it a little chance. You know, the first time a new league starts up, it's it's hard, you know, like the old NFL and AFL. And, you know, no one like that either. They should give it a little chance. 
Well, they have problem is they just jumped right in and, you know, right on NBC and prime time. And, yep. I mean, you know, at the end of the year, it's going to be like $120 million, you know, or something like that that they lost over the course of the season. And it's just too much. Yeah, it well, is you know, the, 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 other, the other thing, too, is also is that, you know, what's different from this league and every other league is that it's one guy owning every team. Like if they had ten How teams, <laughs> well, they still did. That was They were encouraging. <laughs> they but, did. Yeah, but, but um, if you had ten different guys and they're all losing, like, say, ten million, that's one thing. But when you got one guy and he's losing a hundred, you yeah. know, it's like, it's like, with, like with the soccer leagues, the women's and the men's league. I mean, those leagues are losing a lot of money, too. They're not losing quite as much as the women's league is going to lose a ton of money. I mean, it's guaranteed. But they have you know, different people in each city. It's not like it's one guy owning the whole league because then, they boy, that would really be a lot of money to lose in. Yeah, I, I don't think that people are ready to watch football uh, 12 months out of the year. But other yeah. than that, and the, the camera footage with them, like, it was too uh, choppy. Mm-hmm. You go to one guy's back, one guy's foot, one girl's cheerleader, and this and that. You can't. You know, I even I did want to watch the game one time, but it was so choppy it made me almost throw up. Really? But you couldn't watch the, the game. I kind of got a kick out of the new, the, 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 the new angles, um, but then they, you know, when they were coming back on, on expenses and everything, they kind of gave up on it and started doing, you know. But I, but I thought I thought that like in hindsight the um, the theory he had, which was you start a week after the Super Bowl because so many people are into football, I thought that that was flawed because. Because I just remember when I was a big football fan, that when the Super Bowl was over, I didn't want to watch football again for that six was months. Right. You're watching sport. Yeah, it's time to it's fine. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I think they'd have been more successful, maybe, um, oh, maybe like August, September. You know where where you know you have before the, the regular season. Before, yeah. Or, yeah, but you know you don't want to compete with the NFL. But but you know like the the, the season that they said that they that they put it in, I knew that that was going to be trouble because. It's like right at that point where you don't want to watch football, then they're going to give you football. It's like, and then plus it's... Football's out, a great Super Bowl, and that's it. Give it a rest, and then the season starts up again in autumn, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how people are, are you know... Yeah, that's that's the whole mentality yeah, people have. With some big tradition there. Yeah. But anyway. How come you never played college football? It was just... just, just I was going to play my senior year. Uh, I was on a track and field scholarship. I was going to play my senior year, and uh, the coach goes, well, uh, how do you know you can play? Football. I thought it was high school American, and he recruited me as a football. He goes, no, I don't, I don't think so. And uh, so then here, uh, a couple weeks later, I'm on the field doing well with the Dallas Cowboys, and the whole, you know, UCLA staff down there going, geez, Jim, why don't you tell us you could play? And I did. And I told that guy right over there that I, could, I wanted to play, and he wouldn't let me. Well, I mean, do you, when you look back, I mean, do you think that, like, gosh, you know, you, I, I came so close to making the Cowboys if I had played four years of College, I could have had a couple of years in the NFL, maybe. I mean, do you ever think about that? Or yeah, I played a year and a half with the Oakland Raiders after the Cowboys. Yeah, but I mean, so so. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on all that? But I mean, you lost the four years of experience that you would have gained had you played college football. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'd be in five eleven. But uh, yeah, I would love to play ten years. The football had like a regular pension and medical benefits, like most athletes have. You know, most people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bring us up. What, what are your thoughts on that? As far as you know, you've been in wrestling for what, what about twenty one, twenty two years now. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it's there is there is nothing like that. And I mean, you were with a you know with WWF, and you were you know, were star with WWF for many years. And it's kind of like you know compared to you know WWF, WWF did generate a ton of money compared to a lot of uh, sports. And uh, it'd be nice but, if after you know a, a certain age for retirement thing you're over with, which I'm not over or retired at any by any means. Be nice to have some kind of a pension, or med- a little medical something. Yeah. Like your teeth, or your, you know, any kind of. You, know, you get hurt, you just pay for it yourself, or you know, once you're out of it, you know, that's pretty. You get no, you know, pension or nothing. Or has has a lot of your money gone to medical bills, or not that much over the years? I just never allowed myself to get hurt, but uh, yeah, I've had a few <laughs> medical bills. Yeah. I mean, what's those serious injuries you've had? Um, I really haven't had any. I've been very lucky. I've had. Uh, I just really haven't had any serious. I've been very lucky with my neck and knees and back. I'm just really, I'm just very lucky. What in, what type of, uh, as far as training and everything like that, how do you train now as compared to other points in your life? Well, I'm doing a lot of mountain biking right now, and um, I'm still benching 405. I don't think I'll ever lose that. Mm. And uh, just a lot, a lot of squatting and a lot of, the mountain biking is really a key way to stay in shape for wrestling. So I'm going to bike three or four hours a day. Stopping periodically to have a few beers in between, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, it's a great way to keep your cardio up. 
mm-hmm. session 4000 uh, elevation. Oh, I bet it is. Yeah, Lennox Lewis should have done that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that bicycling is a key. But uh, yeah. I would definitely, definitely like to make a very serious comeback with the WWF or the WCW, if that's what they're called. That's what and they're going to call them. Also. Run. Mm-hmm. Definitely want to right. more run. Okay, we are totally out of time. Jim, I want to thank you very much for doing the show. This was very entertaining, two hours. Oh, good. And uh, I just want to remind everyone we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to have Shelton Benjamin of Ohio Valley Wrestling, and we'll see you all tomorrow at 5.